Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the American Sports Connection. I'm your host, the one and only Joey Railroads. Now, before I get to my special guest this evening, don't forget to follow us on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is all at ASC Pods. You can find our entire catalog on B Plus Player Radio. Follow them on Twitter at B Plus Radio. And don't forget to check out our sponsors over at Too Sweet Magazine. You can find them on Twitter at Too Sweet Mag. Now that that's all out of the way, my special guest for this evening, the ma- the guy that uh, has a little hand in Battle Club Pro and uh, Innovative Pro, Mr. Joakim Money Morales. Joakim, how are you, sir? I'm, I'm good, man, but... Uh... I feel a little hurt right now. I, I, you, you've done such a tremendous job introducing me before in the past, <laughs> and then you go and say I have a little hand in two companies I co-own. I know. I just, I, I was being more sarcastic <laughs> than anything, just a little bit. This guy's pulling my chain here already. <laughs> What's going on, Joey? How are you, man? I'm doing very well. Very, very, very well huge weekend of pro wrestling next week man i know you have you're uh probably running around like a chicken with your head cut off well no i uh everything is set in stone just got a few more matches to announce for both shows um and then it's just about getting it getting the damn thing done you know uh ton of sponsors man i can't i can't thank the sponsors enough man i'm gonna let's see if i can get them all off the top of my head there's Title Match Wrestling, which has all Battle Club's content. There's uh, the High Spot, the Jersey Wrecking Crew podcast, who is just tremendous. They do great interviews. They are always down to help out. They cover all our stuff. Um, Then we have the Jobber Tears podcast, personal friends of mine, Sir Wilkins and Janelle Garcia. Janelle from HR is what they like to call her. Uh, yep, I like wrestling. They're not necessarily a sponsor, but they've always been with us. Uh, Sonny Sofrito and this crew have always been huge supporters. Uh, Josh, man, that, that the amazing artist that is Josh, like JM Punk, like everybody knows that that handle, man. His artwork is tremendous. He's gonna table at Battle Club. Uh, Connor Hassler is, is an indie filmmaker doing his best with his uh, RCB comics and, and, and trying to create independent films. Um, we have a new one, uh, one of my latest business partner, one of my closest friends, one of my brothers, uh, he brought on Access Storage as another sponsor. Um, what else? I mean, there's B Plus Player Radio, Review Fix. I can, I can never thank ReviewFix.com and Patrick Hickey Jr. for all the work they do for us man if it wasn't for him our i'm 100 percent sure our audience would be half as wide as it is he gets us in in markets and media outlets that we might not necessarily be able to do on our own because i mean the guy was an nbc writer he's a game connoisseur he's a hockey you know know it all like he gets us places where we not, might not necessarily reach um now i'm starting to lose out on some let's see let's see let's see uh who else is there true heel true heel heat podcast uh sid puller and the gang you know they've got their little beef going on with uh the jobber tears podcast they do excellent work they always make sure to mention that they you know people know where they get their content from they're one of our newer sponsors but they've been so welcoming and 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 vice versa and uh I, I can't thank them enough, man, because they come from a different angle. Like most most podcasts have a, a basis of WWE and then move branch out. And with them, they're 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 indie based, they're Japan based, and they're moving in towards WWE. It's like, hey, like these guys all come from these places. You should check this out. So that crew is so amazing. Uh, we both have to thank Mark Adam Haggerty because I mean, it's Mark Adam Haggerty. He is the man behind B Plus Player Radio. He is the best ring announcer on any coast, on any continent in the world. Um, am I miss? I'm still missing one. Hold on. Did, let, let me go. Let me go through because you know I've got. Hey, that's pretty impressive off the top of your head. <laughs> I've got fifty thousand matches in my brain, and I'm just trying to make sure that I catch everyone who deserves this. 
who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh, <laughs> uh, there's just this. We just had a little chat about uh, not necessarily using uh, digital, digital, you know, a uh, digital device to have all your stuff. But you know, unbeknownst to me, I, so that's the only place I have all the sponsorships. But there we go. Good. Okay, so uh, I named that, named that, named that. Um, Shock talk, Shocky, Shocky, man, Shocky Woodard, uh, man, Shocky's a, a very interesting guy, but Shocky's a guy with a vision. He's a really cool guy. He's always down to help, and I just genuinely enjoy him. I mean, he might be a bit awkward, but he asks the right questions. It's 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 kind of weird, you know. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the new Venom movie, but like. Eddie Brock has his own, like, Eddie Brock report, and he asked those questions that people might go, oh, I didn't expect you to ask that. Yeah. That's, that, that's definitely what Shocky does. Um, I'm also going to give a, a shout-out to a shot of wrestling podcast. Again, not necessarily sponsors, but I we've worked with them um, whenever I do shows outside of Battle Club. Green Man has become a star on his own. They're, uh, they're, good, they're two good dudes. And they're two really good dudes, and they're a really good interview. And I'm just I'm, – I'm waiting to see when the hell they're going to interview me. I might, I, might, I might have to smack the green off Green Man if he takes any longer to interview me. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It's all love. I'm going to see him this Friday at Brie Combination. And then finally, I, I can't – you know, there's people you meet in wrestling, and they immediately become family. And uh, Damian Garcia and the whole Salty Chip Show family, man. Like, so welcoming, like, I mean, that Connecticut show wouldn't have happened if Damien didn't come with us, you know, like, he's such a good guy, he's grounded, he's, you know, he's a few years older than me, but you, you can never tell by looking at him, he's inspiring, you know, he he went out, set forth to, to leave New York and, and be better out in Texas, and he's doing it, man, so, Damien, if you hear this, man, I love you, I miss you, uh, I gotta thank the new ownership crew that's uh my brother is elijah thomas michael sabatino and ray batansis like it's it's me and my my three brothers of 20 years now you know the founder of battle club carlos aristide decided to take a bit of a step back he had his second child a beautiful baby girl named riley him and his wife samantha are just the picture perfect american dream family i mean yeah they're from the bronx that you, you can't really help that disgusting part but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't be here, you know, doing what I love if it wasn't for him. And now I'm happy that I was able to bring aboard my brothers. And we're, we're really trying to continue the legacy and and keep this train rolling. It's built a lot of steam over two year, the last two years. We've done a lot of amazing things. And we're going to do our best to keep it going. Uh, what else? I mean, I can, I can sit here and thank people for the rest of the show, dude. The production crew, guys like Zane Decker, Danny Walsh. Carlos Aristide, Brian K. Photo, Jay Lee Photography from from the uh, the Carolinas, the Virginia area, uh, I believe they're going to be helping out for Battle Club. I mean, it, it, the list goes on and on. My graphics guy, Christopher Beckett, also my partner at Innovative Pro. Like the guy's a whiz when it comes to making match graphics. I mean, he's the he's the genius behind the movie posters for Innovative. He's the genius that that was able to put some of Battle Club's biggest debuts and most common known stars on that faceless man Game of Thrones kind of poster. Like, the guy is so good with graphics. It's it's insane. Um, and obviously, like, the rosters, like, you know, Matt McIntosh, Darius Carter, Anthony Bowens, Harlow O'Hara, the Diamond Dogs. Uh, we don't have them this time, but the Ugly Ducklings, we, they're on Innovative, they're not on Battle Club. You know, it's just, just constant, constant great workers mike verna you know uh, on battle club alone 60 wrestlers 30 debuts a couple of surprises on innovative you know we're about 35 40 workers and 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 some debuts and some surprises you know different match styles first time ever this is my favorite thing that's what i try to reach out for and before we continue going further with actual matches i'm gonna give you Joey Railroads, this next match announcement that I say is special for you because I knew I was going to do the show before the the time was said and done and it was showtime. So, well, I appreciate that. On October twentieth, in this mega show 
called Trial by Combat, 106 Bergen Avenue, Richfield Park, New Jersey. Battle Club Pro is doing so many different things. And here's a banger for you. I've teased some people showing up at Battle Club in debuts, and I've teased some t- some returns in, in Battle Club. And, and in this match, which is a four-way, we have two returns and two debuts. In a super swole fader four-way match, you talk about a whole lot of beef. The Man of Steel, Mike Verna, will take on the Iron Demon, Shane Mercer, Rich Homie Juice, AJ Gray, and Jersey Muscle, Steve Gibke. Ooh. Four of the biggest, strongest guys on the East Coast and in the Midwest are going to beat the living crap out of each other. And I just want to see how many times they try to go outside their element and get caught. And it's just like, well, of course, this guy caught that other guy. Look what he benches. <laughs> That's going to be a, a crazy match, man. Uh, I'm so happy. I'm going to be tweeting this uh, graphic out. Uh, with you, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you so that you can announce it on the a- ACS pod uh, pod media. I appreciate a- that. Yeah, so yeah, man, I'm I'm happy. I'm stoked. I wanted to save that for you because you know you're familiar with Gibke, Verna. You've seen Mercer at Battle Club, and AJ Gray is incredible. Uh, his showing at the lab every single time is amazing. Everything he does all along America is like that guy needs to be everywhere ASAP. I couldn't agree more. Now, um, let's get in a little bit to the rest of the card. Now, um, as, as I just got your picture that you sent me, that's the noise you hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can correct me if I'm wrong here. I, uh, I saw this on uh, Battle Club's social media. It says, uh, Pretty Boy Smooth is returning to Battle Club on October 20th, but I don't see an opponent. Oh, so that's uh, another – we have three more matches to announce. Uh, one is going to be really, really fun. Another is going to be, uh, you know, kind of to steal some thunder from Sunday. It's going to be an innovative idea. Uh, and and Pretty Boy Smooth is going to be in that different creative style match, which uh, we'll be dropping very soon. Okay. Um, it's going to be different. It's going to be in light of, you know, the NBA season starting up. You know, there, there tends to be something that happens a couple of months before, and it impacts the season. So we're going to do something that's going to impact the card with a little something that's kind of homage to the NBA, the NFL, the MLB. Um, and then uh, I'm pretty sure I've, I've mentioned it, but, you know, this is our two-year anniversary. And since day one, we've been huge fans of tag team wrestling. I mean, our first ever match was a tag team match uh, that saw Massage Envy face EYFBO. So, you know, EYFBO has gone on to become LAX with Conan and done huge things. And we've had them back a a ton of times. And we're going to keep having them back until they're you know, completely contracted to WWE because they are one of the best tag teams in the world. So it's only a matter of time. Um, so we love tag team, and I, and I wanted to make the emphasis on tag team wrestling for our two-year anniversary. Yes, we have a ton of main event level, main event caliber singles matches, but I definitely want to emphasize the two-year anniversary being uh, with, with tag team wrestling as a focal point. Um, so we're going to have a tag team gauntlet uh, the first ever in Battle Club Pro history, and those teams will be officially announced in the coming days. Everything will be announced before the show, um, and we're still going to have some surprises, which is which is my favorite part. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right, then. Uh, let's get into what I have in front of me uh, that's for right now announced. Uh, let's see. We'll start with... Team uh, Tasha Steels, which is, if I could pull up this graphic a little bigger, for God's sakes. Uh, <laughs> it's Tasha Steels and Devine going. Davian. Davian. Uh, yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Versus uh, Team Riker, which is the main, st- the main state 
posse. Yeah, so uh, as we saw in Bash in the Bronx, uh, Dan Reichert has been on a quest to find the best talent that Battle Club has to offer because, in his words, he wants to take that talent up to Connecticut. Uh, so he had a Reichert Invitational Gauntlet, and Tasha Steeles won it. And, you know, he had told her that he didn't think she was the type of talent that deserves to get a Reichert contract, which subsequently led to him getting, uh, I want to say she's a size five and a half in shoe, right, right, right between the legs. Um, he kicked, she kicked the ever living crap out of his crown jewels, uh, <laughs> and everyone laughed. And the wonderful and awful thing about Dan Reichert is that he's an incredible businessman. And he banked on Team Federated getting rid of our former commissioner, Dave Sturgio, who is always welcome in the booth with me. Uh, there is no issues between us. That man is amazing. He's helped me so much in my broadcasting career um but unfortunately he's no longer the commissioner because his ordeal with federated ended with them going out on top over the diamond dogs and the ugly ducklings so he seized the opportunity and proposed a business deal that i could not deny i couldn't i looked at things the way they were and i was like okay this is as much as it might suck this is a definite tool that will help battle club grow so it's a 50-50 thing when it comes to running the show. Um, so he's, he, he wants some revenge from getting kicked in the nads. Uh, he challenged her, and she came to me, and she said, well, I'll use Davian. Um, and I was like, well, you know, you're outnumbered. It's, it's, it's a three-on-two, and Riker's going to be ringside, so it's technically a four-on-two. And she's confident in herself and Davian to get the job done. So that's... That's going to be good. I don't know what the consequence of things are. Um, other than him making this this match against Tasha, he hasn't really put an emphasis on his commissionership, but he, he has let me know that he's, there's going to be some wild rides coming up. Um, you know, maybe taking a bit, a page out of my book and waiting to do some surprises. Uh, but that's going to be good because, I mean, Main State Posse, they never disappoint, like ever. And Tasha Steeles has been on kind of a, um, a rise. Like, she's always been good. But, like, I see her. She's debuting left and right for companies here in, in, in towards the end of the year. And she always delivers in the ring. Everyone loves her. Um, and Davian's just a monster. Like, I, I will never get the visual of Davian having the – most vivid crimson mask and still finding a way to pin Hudson Envy in Connecticut. Like she had a hole in her head <laughs> and still got into the ring, caught Davian with a beautiful fisherman suplex for the win. Like how badass is that woman? So Main State's got a, they got a lot to deal with. They really do. And, I, and Davian, although it's only two on three, I think Davian is going to, is a huge part of, the the test that they have to go through if they want to impress Dan Riker. Yeah, th that should be a good. I'm one. doing something. I'm doing something. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. Now you mentioned Federated. We could segue into. That's a good segue. They actually uh, have a tag team match with with two gentlemen that I saw back at uh, Evolve recently. It's Federated versus The End. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, you Again, you know, you want to go back to a whole, whole lot of beef in a match. Um, I, uh, I'm going to open the, the, the curtain a bit, and I was actually talking to Mike Drake one night, and we were sharing some information. Um, he gave me some really good news that he eventually led on to announce. And he said, hey, man, what's what's the plan for us? Like, we we got through this issue with Sturgio. What's next? What's next for Federated? And I told him, I said, listen, I can't tell you who your opponents are because I have to make sure I lock them in. But if all goes the way I want to, you and Brute Vance like will be the smaller team. And he knew immediately. He goes, oh, oh, that's fine. I'll just make sure it's the end of my opponents. And I was like, this guy gets it. But... 
But man, I mean, first let's let's just let me go on record. I have to congratulate Mike and and Odinson. They're they're killing it. They're going to Japan on a tour, which is incredible. Um, and and he's uh, Paro's going to be debuting for the NWA the next day. Like we could, unfortunately, we weren't, we weren't able to maintain him for Innovative. Um, but yeah, he's he's going to NWA the next day. He's going to be debuting and wrestling on that huge show with the rematch between Nick Aldis and, and, and Cody Rhodes. So. These guys are killing it. They've been killing it for a while. They've been a crazy great tag team, all power, no nonsense. I mean, you look at them and just off the visual, it's like these guys would give the Legion of Doom a problem. You know, they're monstrous men. Like, you, you, we've, we've talked, and, you know, I try to be modest about my size, but I know I'm a big guy. And I go to them, and I'm like, fuck, I'm not as big as I think I am. Uh... So yeah, that's they're gonna, huge. They're humongous. So Federated's got their work cut out for them, but just like the main state posse, they're gonna have a uh, man advantage because um, Mike Orlando, who from what it looks like, he's gonna be ready to wrestle. But I just didn't want to push him, so I told him, I told him, you know, you can definitely be ringside. Um, Orlando's gonna be ringside, and their ambassador. Mr. Elliot Martinez is also going to be ringside. So they're going to have a two-man advantage against the end. But I don't know if that's going to matter because that F10, those clotheslines, those German suplexes, that pounce, the power bomb, the super colliders, like the end is a dangerous team. And um, it, it hasn't been announced yet. So I'm going to announce it now. Uh, there will be a change to that graphic. It's going to be for the FIP tag titles. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, huge opportunity for Federated. Um, I've got a promo that should be dropping soon. Again, I'm just waiting on my media team to make sure everything's shirt up. But uh, Drennan's sending, on his, sending his boys. You know, Drennan of the end is sending his boys on a mission to destroy and dominate uh, one of Battle Club's mainstays. I mean, Federated's been around since day one. I mean... There's only four talents that have been in Battle Club since day one. And that's Anthony Bowens, Darius Carter, Matt McIntosh, and Federate, the Federated brand. Like, people have come and gone, and they've been the mainstays. And then the only other talent that's been around just as much is Harlow O'Hara, who's taken the world by storm in 2017. And, excuse me, 2018. I, I scouted her back in 2017, but She's she's been on fire since March, since debuting for Battle Club. It, 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 it's been crazy. I um I'm I'm really looking forward to this because, like you said, um, people that are uh, my uh, younger than us might not know this, but you use the term "Where's the beef?" It's in this match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wendy's Wendy should sponsor this match. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Because and I love their social media, maybe I'll hit them up. Yeah, you should because I mean, I mean, Odinson is just like there aren't many, and I, I mean this in the absolute most positive term. There aren't many muscle heads left, and I want to say honestly, like I've got one match with with four of them that I just announced earlier that you, you'll be able to tweet out is AJ Gray, Mike Verna, Shane Mercer, and Steve Gibke. So I've got four of them. And then I've got the tag team of the end, which is two musclehead monsters. And then on the other side, I like Mick Drake is always training. I don't know if he ever sleeps because he trains so damn much. Bowens is another guy just all muscle. Like he's super versatile. But it's just like there, there aren't many of these guys that have that look that are monstrous in terms of physique and that can work and that can move. And that that clip that was uh, shown, I want to say a week, a week and a half ago, where Odinson just flew into the ring and pounced Lance Lude out of the air from the launch pad McQuack. Like, that is raw power. And I'm just interested in seeing what happens when Brute Rance like and, and, and the, the dagger Mick Drake go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the end. Because, I mean, I don't we, – we joke about it, but, like, I keep putting matches together – that I'm not sure the building can handle. 
<laughs> and this is one of them. All right. Well, we're going to move along. You talk about tag teams on this card. We have another one here with the Lynch Mob going up against the Diamond Dogs. I can't speak highly, uh, any more highly enough of any tag team than I will of the Diamond Dogs. The Diamond Dogs were unbelievably impressive the first time I saw them. Again, through the lab. Shout out to Wrestlers Laboratory. Their second show was incredible. You, you, the first show was off the chain. Lab Normal was just like, wow. You know? And then Death in Bloom. I mean, ugh, Jimmy Jacobs, Darby Allen, you know, uh, you had uh, Jimmy Rave, Mr. Grimm. But, you know, what I'm trying to get at is, like, we are all family, but, man, the Diamond Dogs are super impressive, and they're going to take on the Lynch Mob. And Joey Lynch, Matt Lynch, they've both been on WWE TV this year. They are as solid a tag team as possible. Joey, unfortunately, uh, unable to make his debut back in March because of an injury. And I, I promised him that I'd get him out here before the year was out. So this match just it just writes itself, man. Two mercenaries versus two good old country boys who's just gonna fight. They're gonna fight. They're gonna fight. They look they look great and, and they're just gonna scrap, man. You can just see it. Those two bearded badasses versus, you know, Black Diamond Industries best. I I couldn't agree more. Um m moving along we have Maria Manic going one on one with uh, someone that's uh, recently been wrestling a lot of intergender stuff uh, in uh, Effie. Oh, my. Effie. I love Effie. Effie in every show, in every aspect of every show, is literally whatever the show is missing. He is that turned up to the umph degree. And that's what's wonderful about him. And he's not shy about what he does. Effie beats children. Effie beats women. Effie does death matches. Effie will turn any fans who might not be open to his lifestyle, he'll turn them into believers before the night is over. And then you look over and you realize Maria Maddox is just going to maul him. Because yeah. she's as... As as and, and and no 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 offense, Schlack, if you hear this, if you don't, no offense, Maria, if you hear this or you don't, she's as dangerous, as carnivorous, as scary as she is attractive. So now you have two man eaters, two totally different types of man eaters, two sex symbols, and then two monsters facing each other in the same match. And they just they're they're totally opposite, which is insane. But they're so similar. Which is intriguing. Yeah, it's like they're they're similar but opposite at the same time. Right, like it's like they're bizarros of each other, but they're also both bizarro. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to explain it. I'm really looking forward to that. That was gonna be good, man. That was gonna be really good, and I, I might have to toss the rule book aside for that one. Because they're going to go nuts, and I, I can't find it in myself to sit there and say they shouldn't. Absolutely. All right. Um, moving along, we have Harlow O'Hara defending the Battle Club Pro Icons Championship against Ariel Monroe. Ariel Monroe, part of the May Young Classic, made an impact this year. People fell in love with her. She's called Big Swole for a reason. Um, a lot of power and what doesn't seem to be a big package, but she can go. They don't, you know, her her uh, her swole mates, <laughs> as as she as she calls her fans, totally believe in her, and she's looking to knock down the church of Harlow O'Hara, who is our icons champion. You know, she she capitalized on an opportunity in July. Um, Defeated a Jordan, defeated Jordan Grace, um, and she's our champion. And, and I'm just looking forward to see what's going to happen now. Is she going to be successful in her first defense versus someone who was just on WWE TV? 
you know, someone who, who's known for pushing people to the limits. This is a, a matchup that, li- like, I legit, like, I didn't scout this. They teased it on Twitter. It's like, yeah, I'm going to make that happen. <laughs> you know? Like, I was like, oh, I'm going to take that, and I'm just going to do, do it here. I'm just going to do it here. I just, I just have to. I just have to. I just had, they, they, they literally, like, set it all up. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to be the one to give you a platform. Um, but, again, you know, Harlow has been on a tear. I mean, she she fell short against Mia Yim in July, capitalized and, and, and beat Jordan Grace. She's beat Jessica Havoc. She was in the finals of the Gauntlet to crown the champion. She's beat Sue Young. She has just been on a tear. Like, it's, it's, it's her own personal crusade to just wipe out non-believers and convert them to the Church of Harlow O'Hara. The future is very bright for her. So bright, so bright for someone who who, who basks in the darkness. It's it's uh, you know, it's a weird like it's a weird parallel, right? Yeah, it's 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 kind of you know paradoxical. Like, how can her future be as bright as she is when she lives and thrives in the darkness? But maybe that's just what maybe that's what it takes. Like, I don't know, man. She's she's special. Everyone falls in love with her. Like, I've literally seen it. She'll walk out. People give her a look. They're skeptical. Halfway through the match, they're like, wow. Before the match is over, they're cheering her name. It has happened in Connecticut. It happened at Innovative. It happened when she faced Kimberly. It happened when she faced Havoc. Like, people, like, they fall in love with her. Maybe... There's something supernatural about it. Maybe she's got her hand on some things <laughs> that is, you know, allowing for control. Or maybe it's just the fact that she's naturally gifted and she delivers. I agree. Next is um, this one I'm really looking forward to because I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, Anthony Bowen's going one-on-one with Brody King. Man, like... You talk about East meets West, two guys that are going to test each other, two guys that are going to take each other to the limit. Bowens, I say it every single time because I mean it. We put, we put the company on his back. He made events at our first two shows, and I felt like both times he was the exclamation point on the main event, on the show, because he was that good in his matches. And... Brody King, every time he is anywhere, whether it's on the West Coast, whether it's on the East Coast, or for MLW, Florida, New York, wherever he goes, the guy's just impressive. I mean, you know, that, that Brody moniker doesn't come lightly, and he fulfills it. He fulfills that legacy. He's a big, nasty bastard who can do so much more than just beat the crap out of you. And people love it. People love it. Low Bowens. So what's going to happen here when you get wrestling's five-tool player and Anthony Bowens versus someone the caliber of Brody King? That that's going to be a good one, man. That's going to be a really good one. I was really proud to be able to put that together for the first time ever. Yeah, I'm really really excited to see that. Big fan of Brody King and glad to see him back on the East Coast. All right, let's see here. Uh, here's an- another one that I'm really looking forward to. The Bad Apple himself. <laughs> Matt McIntosh going one-on-one with Homicide. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, Mark Haskins had a situation that was out of his control, uh, unable to make his Battle Club for the interview, but he's ensured me that once everything is taken care of, he will be working for us. Once everything is settled and you know all good things are go are go he would love to work for battle club pro on the east coast um but homicide man homicide was literally like i spoke to matt and i'm like hey man so this is the situation homicide's name was the first one to pop up and i was like all right i'm gonna make this happen for you and by the glory of wrestling gods for some Absolutely unknown reason, because why isn't he everywhere every day? Homicide was free, and we made it happen. We made it official. You know, Matt McIntosh can, can 
scratch that one off the bucket list, you know? Um, and that's going to be a banger, man. Like, we saw what Matt Mack and Josh could do against Jimmy Havoc. And then a few weeks later, I was I had the, the privilege of filming ICW and the, the, the beating, the beating that Homicide gave his opponent there. I, he, he, he threw the guardrails at him. Like, uh, Nate Webb, I, I, I felt bad for him at points. Like, like, dude, you just you're out here you're gonna fight, and 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 Homicide's just taking all his his New York swag out on you, you know. So they're gonna get down gritty, and it's gonna be something to watch because I also feel like with that match against Jimmy Havoc, we opened up a different side of Matt McIntosh, a more more eager side to inflict pain, not just outperform people, not just win the match. But to actually find comfort in hurting others, I, I, I kind of got the sense looking into his eyes after that match. I I agree with that. It, he's going to have to take it to another level against Homicide. Yeah, uh, you know, Notorious One Eight Seven's been doing this for a really long time, and he just seems to be getting better and better every time he does it. Couldn't agree more. Uh, next on my sheet, I have this, uh, this will be very fun, is um, the father of change, Darius <laughs> Carter, going one-on-one -on -one with the king of the goths, Jimmy Havoc. Darius Carter has been saying, this is what it's all come to. It's been order versus chaos. You know, Jimmy Havoc obviously representing chaos, the king of gods, deathmatch extraordinaire, you know, crazy hardcore, thumbtacks, tables, you name it, he's done it. Pickaxe, you know, for, for not pickaxe, excuse me, an axe for matches, just 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 an intimidation factor, you know, literally putting axe to the throat of fans, like, don't test me. Yeah, right next to me. <laughs> And, and then, you know, the father of change, the man behind the metamorphosis of pro wrestling. Like, he, he, he wants to continue his crusade. And he ha unfortunately hasn't had the ability to have the carnage with him the last event. And he won't have him this time either. So it's just going to be Darius Carter. So it's like his medal is going to be tested. I mean, that match against Darius Lockhart was incredible. And... They hit each other so hard, and I feel like Lockhart came up just short because you know Carter's very opportunistic, and I don't, I don't know if Havoc with his experience is going to allow for that. And this might be another match to where I just kind of tossed the rule book to the side and said, "Let him go." Yeah, that that I think that would uh, work well for both of them. <laughs> But um, I almost forgot last, but certainly not least. I have here in front of me the last match, which is the Bayonne Badass himself, Danny Moff going one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Grimm. Ah, man. I have a... Uh, I'm proud of myself. I've done a really good job of creating a lot of destructive matches. We might not have a building... The next night for Innovator <laughs> Pro. I mean, between Federated in the end and then the Super Swole Four Way, you know, uh, Havoc and, and Carter and Homicide and McIntosh and Brody and, and Bowen, Manic and Effie. It, this is God. What the hell did I do? <laughs> Talk about two guys that that are gonna, as they say, bring it or um, you know, really. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, every time they hit each other, there's, there's, there's a legitimate threat of them breaking the sound barrier. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you, we've all, I mean, for, for so long, we've all seen the, the, the punishment that Dan Moff can inflict with his chops and, and, and Grimm just has such a stiff forearm. And they both, they both just run, love to run through their opponents. 
So, like, what happens? You know, like the age old question: the, the irresistible force meets the immovable object. Yeah, it, it, this is literally going to be two planets colliding, and and I mean, is it going to create a black hole? Like, will will all the fans be you know sucked into some vortex because they tried to smash into each other too hard? Yeah, that's that's very possible. <laughs> now, um. You said you have some other uh, stuff you'll announce later on, but yeah, I we've wanted to get a couple more to go. To go, um, they're going to be good. They're, you know, I don't, I don't think I've, I, I, not to be boastful, I don't have a dud on this card anywhere. That's awesome. Now I wanted to transition over to the next afternoon when you have uh, Innovative Pro Wrestling and uh, run down that one really quick and get your thoughts. Shoot, buddy. I'm all here for you. All right. Uh, we'll start off with this one. In the first round of the Innovative Tag Team Tournament, we have Domesticated Violence going against the Heavenly Bodies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you talk about... Again, we're gonna have we're gonna bring back Maria Matic, and uh, Schlack will be making his innovative pro debut. So you talk about two people who might not necessarily be America's vision of a wholesome, perfect couple against two brothers who have been doing this for so long, have been so good, had so many wonderful tag matches for Wrestle Pro. For you know, they've been down the reality of wrestling. They've been up and down the East Coast. The Heavenly Bodies are just good. You know, there's there's no replacing the relationship you have with a brother, and they've translated that into wrestling. And they're damn good at what they do because of that relationship they have. That's gonna be a interesting, very different styles. You know, the Heavenly Bodies are all about mouthing off and getting under their opponent's skin and being opportunistic where Schlack and Maria just literally want to eat your face. Yeah, they just like to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that should be very interesting. Um, next, we actually have a Battle Club Pro uh, Icons Championship match, which the winner of the Harlow O'Hara and Ariel Monroe match will wrestle Diamante. Yes, Diamante Impact's own, LAX's own, uh, you know, uh, someone else I just am so incredibly thankful for that I have the ability to work with. Unfortunately, due to injury, she was unable to make her debut for us back in May uh, for May the Queen reign. Um, but we were able to work it out where I could, you know, you know, she's she's doing so many wonderful things. She's she's back on the grind. She's wrestling as much as she can, and she's damn good at what she does. Uh, you know, I'm able to fly her in early Sunday, early enough where she can get that match in, and she's excited because she feels like she could have won everything that night. She feels like, you know, although uh, you know Commissioner uh, uh, Leva Bates. Did a good job as a stand-in, Leva Monte versus Sue Young. She feels if she wrestled, she would have won the championship that night. So this is, you know, I was unable to grab her for the Saturday before. So this is her way of getting the title match that she never received due to injury. Um, and we'll see if, if Harlow can can get over Big Swole or if uh, Miss Ariel Monroe can take out the church and that's going to be a hell of a match because Diamante, she's, she's, she's about it. You know what I'm saying? She is, that Latin fire is real strong with her. So she doesn't care who it is because the Cuban, the, the Cuban diamond is just going to cut through whoever it stands in front of her. Absolutely. Um, next, we have a tag team match that I'm very excited for. The Ugly Ducklings going against The Awakening. Yeah, I mean... We all know what the Ducks are capable of. They're they're fun. They're different. I mean, they are legitimately who they say they are. They're a bunch of ugly mother duckers. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Mikey is my spirit animal. 
because that man is incredible. His Hulk Hogan is second to none. That is a fact. <laughs> uh, Rob Killjoy is like just just talking to him. See the passion he has for wrestling is it's like rejuvenation, you know. And then Lance might be the quiet one, but Matt Lance Lance is the one that's fiery. He's all over the place. He's he, he might be small in stature, but that man uses every single ounce in his body. He's flipping and diving and crashing into whatever is near him because that's the best weapon he's got. And I mean, the Awakening. I everyone and their mother loves the Awakening. G Raver, Stockade. Those guys cause all forms of destruction. Stock has gone. He's made it a mission to be in the best shape of his life for this latter part of the year. He's lost a ton of weight, which is incredible because regardless of how big he was, he could always move. Like, Stockade was just one of those guys, you know, just like, wow, it's a marvel to watch because at his size, you just didn't expect that. And Raver's another one, you know, similar to Lude. Like, I'm just going to jump off whatever to kill you. It, it might kill me, but I'm going to win the match, you know? And this is a total clash of styles. The Ducklings are, are colorful. They're funny. They're bright. And, and the Awakening's like, yeah, no, murder. That's our thing. I always remember um, when I would talk to uh, Jessica Havoc when they wrestled in a six-man at one of the uh, – innovative pro shows before and i was like you know i was like this is a really cool like combination and she goes oh yeah she's like we're all three like serial killers <laughs> exactly that's exactly what it is I mean, this is this is duck hunting season and and we're gonna see if if the ducks can you know use all those wonderful tricks up their sleeves to to, to get a win or if, uh, you know, there's going to be a crispy fried duck for dinner that Sunday. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Next, we have a first time ever match with Mike Verna going one on one with Jordan Grace. I had the, uh, let's call it privilege of working for a now defunct company about a year back, 14 months back, where Team Pog, Lefisto, and Jordan Grace took on Stockade, the aforementioned Stockade, and Mike Verna. In that match, Jordan Grace threw around Mike Verna. From that moment on, Mike Verna has always wanted Jordan Grace to be his first one-on-one -on -one intergender match. Now he gets it. There is just something in him where he wants to test her. And we all know she's not scared of anybody because to go face to face with Brian Cage at All In and then at Beyond is incredible. So, you know, Thick Mama Pump, The Last Pure Athlete, whatever name you want to give her, she lives the strong style as much as anybody can. And I don't mean strong style in terms of the strikes. Or the, no, she's legit just strong. That's her style. Is strength. And she's going to go one-on-one -on -one with the Man of Steel. So you got Superman versus Wonder Woman. And we've seen all those wonderful animated movies and, and TV shows where it's always a stalemate. And this might match, this might, this match might go on forever because I, I can't see either one outpowering another. Like, I can literally be, have... I envision Mike trying to jump onto her from somewhere and her catching him and him being like, I messed up. I'm scared, you know? And I can, I, I, and we've seen with huge opponents, Mike set up for that vertical suplex and just bouncing them off the top rope and continuing to hold them as if they're light as a feather. This is, this is going to be good, man. They're, they're, this is two superheroes going at it. I, I'm reminded of the old saying, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> exactly, because it might come back to powerbomb you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we have uh, another first time ever with pro wrestling maniac 
Joe Gacy going one on one with Brody King. Yeah, man, Brody. Brody's got a tough weekend ahead of him to go from the five tool player Anthony Bowens for Battle Club Pro to excuse me, Innovative Pro and Pro Wrestling Maniac. I mean, I, I, Joe Gacy's just it, so you know. It's weird in America where people tend to idolize serial killers. <laughs> it's what Joe Gacy fans are like. Oh, yes, we love him. He's 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 gonna set this guy on fire. Okay, it's Joe Gacy. Let's just go with it, you know. <laughs> and and Joe embraces it. Joe embraces the 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 maniacs that that love him. And and he is he's he's every bit of pro wrestling's maniac. He he can do it all, you know, the death matches, the wild, insane, you know, crazy hardcore, but then he gets in there and he can mix it up with anybody. His match against Josh Woods proved that. Josh Woods an accomplished wrestler, MMA star, and everyone thought it was gonna be a straight up brawl and, and no, they started that five first five or six minutes was just wrestling. And it was like wow. Gacy can do everything. And again, like I spoke about him earlier because, you know, it's it's smart to to mix and match matches and, and talent, you know, for the whole weekend. That's why we run Saturday and Sundays. Like, hey, I'm challenging myself. How can I make this day better than that day? Uh, Brody King can do everything. Brody King can do absolutely everything. You know, the, the, the pride of California right now, killing it wherever he goes. And he, he might just have to kill... Pro Wrestling's Maniac to get this win. Definitely. Uh, next, we have the Bayon Badass, Danny oh Moff, God. going one-on-one -on -one with the King of the Goths, Jimmy Havoc. You talk about two completely different people with two completely different styles who have the same motive in every match. Crush, kill, destroy. And you took the words out of my mouth. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy Havoc goes about it an entirely different way than Danny Moff does, but the the end, you know, the conclusion tends to be the same. They win, and their opponent is 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 in the pile of just their their own guts. Um, I I don't know how true it is, but I, I heard that Havoc's legitimately considering bringing some kind of firepower <laughs> to, <laughs> to beat Moff. And and Moff is so scary that he might just eat whatever is being shot at him and yeah. keep moving forward like a Terminator. Um, Jimmy Havoc might have to do his best uh, Macaulay Culkin uh, <laughs> impression and just have all the tricks up his sleeve to it's, win this match. There's, there's not a lot of people in pro wrestling that I can say, like, legitimately, like, terrify me. But Danny Moff is one of them. And and out of respect, I won't tell you about the other side of Moff because I, I don't want to deal with that. But that man is as great a human being as he is scary. I'm not going to give any examples. I've but heard that. that He's that scary for a reason. He is that scary for a reason. The, the, the Hispanic people know when I say el, el cuco, el cucuy, like that, that's it. That monster, the boogeyman at night, looks like Dan Moff. <laughs> that's why the Predator graphic was perfect for it. I agree. Now, last but certainly not least, in a first time ever, no disqualification match. We have the king, the god, MDK all day, gang affiliated, Nick Gage going one on one with JT Dunn. Pro wrestling savior. Just, just listen. Pro wrestling savior. We're going to get biblical here. The savior of pro wrestling is going to go one on one with a man that indulges in murder, death, kill. <laughs> it's Satan versus Jesus Christ in, in the middle of a ring. It's, it's, it's death by elbow 
versus a man who prides himself on being the baddest motherfucker in any cell block, in any wrestling ring, in any venue, wherever he goes. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you a quick story. When you put this up on Twitter, uh, the um, the video uh, after it, the last Innovative Pro show, where he was challenging Gage, somebody put on Twitter, like, oh, well, this is, you know, JT Dunn's house, that building and all that. I had to reply. I'm like, I'm sorry. I really like JT. I was like, but you haven't seen the horrors that I've seen Nick Gage do. And 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 to, to Nick Gage's credit, after the first show, after, no, after his first performance, because unfortunately he was unable to perform at his first show, Rich Juan took his place against Dan Moff. Um, after his first win against Mr. Grimm at Innovative Second Show, Nick tweeted, I am Innovative Pro. And I, I, I genuinely believe that it was like, it was kind of prophetic. Like, maybe JT knew that Nick Gage was going to make that statement. And in a foreshadow type of move, I'm going to call you out before you make that statement. And then we're going to have a match to really determine who is Innovative Pro. Um, and man, I mean, there weren't a lot of camera angles on me, obviously, because whenever JT Dunn has a mic, like, the, the attention gets drawn his way. Um, but when he did that, I had no idea he was going to do that. Like... This is as 100% real as it gets. I had zero idea he was going to do that. My jaw almost went through the stage. I was like, what did this mofo just do? <laughs> because if the entire weekend of pro wrestling happens not to knock that building down, that match has the potential to set the town on fire. Totally. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to that. It is going to be just staggering to see the links that these two men are going to go to try to finish each other. Um, <laughs> Nick Gage has said it over and over again. You got to kill me. You got to kill this bad motherfucker to beat him. Um, and I, 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 we've seen how dangerous death by elbow can be. It's literally got to be death by elbow in order for Nick to go down and, and JT to be prosperous in in his third match for Innovative Pro. I mean, the, the, the banger that was him versus Shane Strickland was just like, wow. And then him versus Jimmy Havoc was just like, wow. And it feels like JT's on his own mission to end all death match wrestlers all hardcore icons. He's beat Tommy Dreamer. He's gone through Matt Tremont. You know, he beat Jimmy Havoc. He's, he, he, he faced Jessica Havoc. He, he's looking to go through them all with reason because in order to be the best in a game, you've got to beat the best. And, you know, him being the protege of Chris Hero, him being his partner, his being the, him being his brother, he realizes the things he's got to do in order to reach that next level. And a win over Nick Gage could propel him forward. I like it, it might set him to the top where I probably can't bring JT Dunn back because he gets signed. Like that's how huge a win over Nick Gage can be. Because you've been in the building when for whom the bell tolls hits, everything stops. <laughs> everything stops and everyone in the crowd goes bonkers as if it's D-block on a party night. Yeah, that's a fact. I don't think there is a more exciting or fun entrance in pro wrestling right now. Yeah, I, 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 man, it, it's, it's incredible. And uh, a little quick segue before I go on to my point for, for Nick Gage. Um, one of my proudest moments, again, because uh, Darius Carter is who he is. And he decided to have the match against Mia Yim instead of facing Nick Gage. When I found that last minute replacement, that was grim. I was proud to say that the crowd, I've never seen a Nick Gage crowd react that way. 
Grimm's music hit. He walked through that curtain, and the crowd realized, oh, shit, this is not going to be easy. Like, Nick Cage is genuinely in trouble, and that shows all the potential and stardom that is in someone like the hitman for hire, Mr. Grimm, who I'm proud to say will be coming back for Innovative. Um, I'm hoping I can get to announce his match soon. Um, he's an incredible talent. Nick Gage came out on top because he's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> but but that 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 reaction was it sent chills down my spine because it let me know that the f- fans recognize Grim 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 is a, a beast, which is why I'm so happy with the match the day before with him and Moth. Now, to speak on behalf of Nick Gage, to sit there and if he beats JT Dunn, he's going to dethrone the person that has main evented and won the two main events for Innovative Pro. If he beats JT Dunn, he can sit there and say, "There, I've, I've slain the savior. I am now the king without question. If he beats JT Dunn, maybe Nick Gage gets a second look by some companies that might have overlooked him because it's like, shit, this man is who he is. Gang affiliated, MDK, the fucking king, and and that's just an it's an incredible thing to sit on. Like, you know, the potential for you know a victory for either of these men can be monumental, and I I, I can't take any credit for it. Like JT said, I want that man because I know who that man is, and Nick Gage is like I back down from no one. Let's do it. Yeah, it's like, two, you know, two titanic forces colliding. It, yeah, totally, totally, totally. Um, yet to be announced, there are a couple of matches for Innovative Pro, but I'm glad to be saying that Logan Black will be returning to defend the fact that he has yet to lose an innovational match. And in his third innovational match, he'll be in there with a new class of talent. And that's going to be incredible. Logan Black is an awesome, awesome pro wrestler. And I just, I want to see what the King of Chaos has in store for whoever might be in that match. That should be a lot of fun. I almost forgot to mention, um, you're going to have a special uh, meet and greet <coughs> there with a uh, good the friend of mine. The bulldozer himself, Matt yeah. Tremont. Yeah, Matt. Um, you know, Matt. Matt. Matt's made his intentions clear for the future. He he wants to work in certain situations. Uh, he wants one match that that at the world is waiting to see. Um, but he wants to be very specific about who he works with and who he helps build, and it is the greatest privilege to say that he's going to do the meet and greet, check out the atmosphere, and hopefully one day, you know, in the future, we can actually utilize Matt Tremont in a match. Um, it's going to be great for the fans, you know, to sit there and, and, and have the meet and greet who haven't had the privilege, the honor to meet this legend, you know? I mean, Tremont's name, it it does two things. It, it It's just like gives that feeling of fear and uncertainty to his opponents and to his fans. It's like, wow, this man has been through everything and I'm going to appreciate whatever time is left. You know, he can go four five, six more years because he's that good. You know, he's one of the guys that can do more than just deathmatch stuff. Matt Trima can wrestle. Totally. So if he decides to stop all that, hardcore stuff, which he might not because that's his forte, but if he decides to stop that, who's to say he can't go another 10 years, you know? Conversely, he's been through so much things that would kill any normal man yeah. if, he, if he wants to say, you know what, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm going to focus on, you know, my 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 fiancé, my wife, my, my store, my school, my company, 
who's going to say, no, you can't do that? No one. No one has the fucking balls. I was going to say, who's going to begrudge him that? <laughs> yeah, no one's no one's going to gonna, – yeah, absolutely not because that's when Tremont puts a two-by-four wrapped in barbed wire upside your head and say, get out of my way. I'm, I'm a legend. <laughs> you know, I, I do what I damn well please. Um, and, yeah, man, I, I, I've, I've, I've – just been so happy to come across Tremont occasionally. Um, it's super nice guy. You know firsthand. Like one of the nicest dudes ugh. I've ever met. And he, uh, how do I want to say this? He doesn't do it because he want. You know, he does it because he likes doing it. You know, yes, like out of the exactly. Kind of it's not for any other reason. It's just he is that person. Like there's 7.5 billion people on this earth, and I can genuinely say Tremont's definitely in the top percentile when it comes to nicest people but just don't get on his bad side because you will wake up with glass shards in your ears <laughs> and your eyes and and places where the sun don't shine and he'll do it with a smile on his face yeah that's very true now before we get out of here how can people uh get tickets for both shows like is there a uh, website or how does that work um facebook.com if you go on facebook.com innovative pro or battle club pro there are links uh brown paper bag tickets i believe it is um yeah. the events are there i'm pretty sure pre-sale will close thursday um so you know you want to get your tickets because you don't want to miss this incredible you know weekend of wrestling it's 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 gonna be different it's gonna be huge we're celebrating a two-year anniversary for battle club this is innovative pros third show you know um i i i, I both cards sell themselves like i don't i don't need to do these these interviews i do them because i like to talk to you guys i love to talk to you joey you're 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 an awesome interview. You're fun. You're easy to talk to, um, but I do the interviews because I want to talk about it because I'm excited about it as a wrestling fan. Like I I'm happy with with what I've put out there, and I'm so thankful for everyone that's that's bought tickets in advance and will buy tickets at the door. And you know if if you can't make either, you know thanks for watching the content online on YouTube through Title Match through our YouTube channels, you know, looking through our social media for updates and stuff like that. Like the fans are everything. And, and I'm happy to put these shows together for the fans because they do deserve it. You know, my mission in pro wrestling is to change the culture. Like, you know, I'm not going to bad mouth anyone, but I don't want a fan to come to any of my shows and go, man, that, that was garbage. Or man, that was a $20 wasted. Like I want, every single person to be satisfied and be happy because I'm thankful that they decided to, to, to give their money and more importantly, to give their time. Time is something you can't get back. Time is always fleeting. So if you decide to use yours with me and my family at Battle Club Pro at Innovative Pro Wrestling, that there's no more appreciation. You know, that's, you've seen it. I come out and I bow to everyone because I'm infinitely thankful. I am infinitely thankful for the fans because they are why we all do this. I'm thankful to the locker room because they always give me everything they got and they do it in the best way possible. And I've never had a headache with anyone I've ever dealt with. And, you know, I don't know if that's going to continue going forward. I can only speak of what I've experienced, but my locker room is always fun. And every show I do is fun because the crowd is into it. The the wrestlers are into it. The production crew is into it. I'm so into it. And 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 doing these interviews let me know that people who not only watch and, and observe and, and do their research are into it, but they want to talk to me because they're happy with what the product is. Right. So, I was going to say, at the end of the day, that's what pro wrestling is supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun. Yes. 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 And, and like I said, you know, I want to change the culture for the better where it's fun all across the board for everyone involved. Couldn't agree more. Now, real quick before we get out of here, if they want to follow uh, Battle Club or Innovative on social media, whoever listens to this, how can they do so? Man, we're on, you know, Battle Club Pro is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
Instagram and, and Twitter is X Battle Club Pro, Facebook's Battle Club Pro. Um, Innovative Pro is Innovative Pro underscore on everything on, on Twitter and Instagram, I believe, and then on Facebook it's just Innovative Pro Wrestling. Um, you know, follow us. You know, watch our stuff. Uh, Battle Club Pro YouTube channel is a ton of content. Again, title match has all our stuff. If you want to watch the whole show, if you just want to watch matches. It, it, it's 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 all out there and like i said i'm always engaged you know if people want to message me i answer i it's, it's it's so disrespectful to leave someone unanswered now you know i i do a lot of things i have i have many real jobs and then i run two companies so i might not get back to you immediately but i do answer and i thank you all for reaching out whether you're a worker whether you're a fan whether you're someone who's interested in sponsoring whether you're a podcast I love it. I love you guys. I do it for you guys. I do it for myself. I do it because I want to put something out there that I'd want to watch. Because I feel like if I'd want to watch it, most people would want to watch it. And if you're not, if you're not interested in in my product, that's okay. You know, wrestling wrestling for everybody. It's it's Coca Bana says it all the time. It's subjective. You know, you're gonna find whatever you like and you're gonna watch it. You know, just try to just try to remove the negativity. If just things you don't like, you don't have to speak on it. Just enjoy what you do like and, and, and continue to enjoy what you like. And I'll do my best to give you something to enjoy. Couldn't agree more. So on that note, we're going to get out of here for tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, give it a thumbs up, all of that good stuff. And we'll see you back next time. Have a good night, everybody.